Good morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. The Pokemon anime has done a lot of things over the past 23 years. Some of it good, and some of it bad. Some of it seizure-inducing. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a brief overview of the best and worst parts of every Pokemon anime series. And that's it. I feel like this intro should be longer, but it's pretty self-explanatory. So, uh, how you doing? Starting with the original series, which encompasses all of Kanto, the Orange Islands, and Johto. For us Western audiences, it is the first five seasons of the anime, or the first 274 episodes. Actually, there's this weird thing where the dub scrunched the last few Johto episodes into season six, which was supposed to just be Hoenn. Don't ask me why they did that, I already stay awake at night thinking about it. Anyway, this is the longest Pokemon series since they didn't bother divide Generation 1 and Generation 2, which means there is a wide variety of things that they got right and wrong. The best thing about the original series is the writing, in my opinion. This may be due to growing up with the 4Kids dub and the many script changes they made, but it's so funnily written with so much cheesy dialogue. Not only that, but there are a lot of interesting concepts used in the first season especially, like a Pokemon boxing tournament, a Pokemon race, and a battle between two gangs attempting to be recognized as an official league gym. These are exactly the kinds of things that I would want to see happening in a Pokemon world, aspects of the world that we didn't get to see in the games. Not only are the episodes comedically written, but the concepts are unique and well written too. The worst part of the original series, and in my humble opinion, the entirety of the Pokemon anime, is the Johto saga. The transition into Johto is jarring to say the least. The Indigo League arc of the anime was quick and snappy, it hit all the points it needed to without dragging it out, mostly because they just didn't expect the show to stay around very long. Even Orange Islands, which was designed to be an arc of entirely filler, didn't really feel like it, because they could just make up whatever they wanted to. There was no attachment to the core games, the episodes still felt fresh and fun. But then Johto hits and you're like, good god, what happened? The first half of Johto is painful. They ended up scrapping the GS ball arc that was meant to carry over from the Orange Islands, which left nothing but a void of filler on top of filler on top of filler. On top of that, we're forced to watch Ash painfully find new excuses to get rid of each and every one of his Kanto Pokemon that we've grown so attached to. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, Charizard, and even Heracross, who Ash had just captured in Johto, was shipped off to the lab rather hastily and didn't return until over 100 episodes later. Who wrote that into the story? What was the point? There's like two small Team Rocket focused arcs in Johto, and that's really it. There's some teases with the legendary beasts and ho along the way, but they end up amounting to absolutely nothing. The majority of the saga just feels like a complete waste of time. Moving on to the Advanced Generation, which spans 192 episodes, including all of Hoenn and the Kanto Battle Frontier. The best part of the series was that it proved that things can change and everything will still be okay. Sure, we lost all of Ash's old Pokemon, but his new ones are great and full of personality. We lost Misty, but we gained Mei, who has a lot more relevance to the main story. The advanced generation was all about introducing new concepts and ideas, and I think for the most part they were all pulled off pretty well. Pokemon contests in the Battle Frontier notably stick out as new goals to be conquered by our heroes. These were fantastic additions to the series. Worst part is the handling of the Team Magma and Team Aqua plot. I liked how these guys showed up periodically throughout the series as a more ominous threat compared to Team Rocket, but the final confrontation with them later in the series left a lot to be desired. Ash gets stuck with a rogue, mind-controlled Pikachu for the majority of this two-parter. Believe me, that is not the first time or the last time you'll see that happen in this anime. Lance just kind of swoops in out of nowhere, which admittedly was some cool continuity, but he really just hogs most of the show. And the actual battle between Groudon and Kyogre is nothing to write home about. It's mostly either a slideshow or some very cheap looking animation. With almost a hundred episodes leading up to this conflict, it just feels painfully underwhelming. This is the worst villain arc in the show, if you ask me. Up next is the Diamond and Pearl series, which covers the Sinnoh region. I know, you're shocked. The best part of the series is by far how they handled Paul and Chimchar. Paul was truly Ash's greatest rival, being the complete antithesis of everything Ash stood for. And that point is made even better when Chimchar is added into the mix, a Pokemon that Paul released for being weak, that Ash later captured, trained to become an Infernape, and ultimately used it to finally defeat Paul when it mattered most, the quarterfinals of the Sinnoh League tournament. Finally teaching Paul the important lesson that a Pokemon's strength can be developed and isn't just natural. Yeah, I keep telling that to competitive players, Ash, they'll listen eventually. Worst part of the series is definitely the filler. As a whole, this is the worst paced Pokemon series. There are entire year-long gaps between some of Ash's gym battles with nothing of substance in between. This isn't even the entertaining original series filler. This is dry, uninspired filler that feels like it's continuously on loop. I don't know why, but there's little to no humor at all for the first 75% of Diamond and Pearl. This series takes itself way too seriously at times. I don't care how dark the overarching story is, I'm still watching Pokemon 
Pokemon, not the Dark Knight. Actually, there's probably more comedy in that, bad comparison. Fortunately, as soon as the Spear Pillar arc finished up, the comedy made a sudden return, which made the last season a lot more watchable, in my opinion. Now, moving on to best wishes, the best part was definitely... Uh, when it ended. In all seriousness, it would probably have to be the rivals again. Now, I do think Trip is a little lacking when compared to Paul, but I like that all the main characters had someone to compete against. In addition to Trip, Ash also had rivals in Bianca and Stefan, Iris had Georgia, and Silent had Burgundy. And more often than not, they would all end up fighting each other during the many tournament arcs throughout Unova, which led to some memorable and ironic battles. My personal favorite being that Silent, of all people, managed to defeat Trip before Ash even could. These tournament arcs may not have mounted to much, but they were fun and threw a few unexpected curveballs our way. Which is why it disappoints me so much to say that the worst part of the Best Wishes series is the Unova League arc. For starters, it's only six episodes, and one of them in the middle is filler! On top of that, there's all kinds of weird writing decisions throughout this entire arc, like Ash knocking out Trip in the first round, Ash not even battling Bianca, or Virgil, who appeared to be his newly introduced rival for this arc. And of course, Ash losing to the one trainer with less brain cells than him, Cameron, in one of the most horribly written fights I've ever seen in the Pokemon anime. The final episode of the tournament, I would argue, is a contender for the worst Pokemon episode ever. I say contender because the Axe Who Gets Lost Failure episode is also in this arc. They're both really bad episodes. Best part of Pokemon XY is the Team Flare arc. Now, we were all a little salty going into this arc since Ash had just devastatingly lost in the Kalos League finals, but this arc did a lot to ease the pain. And by ease the pain, I mean having five of the most emotionally charged episodes ever in a row. How is this show making me cry over the death of a freaking robot? Honestly, XY is worth watching just for the flare arc. If I remade my top 10 Pokemon anime episodes, there's a good chance that all five of these would be up there. This arc perfectly ties the entire series together in a dramatic and emotional manner. The worst part of XY would probably have to be the lack of continuity. In fact, the writers later admitted that they simply forgot to include any returning characters or flashbacks. Like, I could get both my arms amputated and still have enough fingers to count the amount of references to past series. It's just a little disappointing how disconnected the series feels from the rest of the anime. Also, this is where the dub started getting back but I'm not getting into that again. Sun and Moon's best part is how interconnected the entire series feels. There's never been so much continuity between episodes before. See, Pokemon and other long-running series are infamous for these things called characters of the day, who are essentially characters that are introduced in one episode and then never appear ever again. Like that dude from the McDonald's drive-thru today? Yeah, he's just gonna vanish and never come back. A prime example of this would be the Samurai in episode 4, who of course had the Metapod versus Metapod battle against Ash. In Sun and Moon, there are a lot of characters who feel like one-offs that actually did return multiple times throughout the series. And I really liked that. I think the writers did a great job of making Alola feel like a more personal and homey community, which for Ash was exactly what it was. The worst part of this series for me personally were the Ultra Guardians episodes. I could never get into these. The whole concept of Lusamine and the Aether Foundation hiring a bunch of children to investigate and capture Ultra Beasts just seemed so stupid and out of place to me. That's like if Elon Musk suddenly wanted me to start developing and naming things for him. Huh, maybe I should take him up on that. On top of that, these episodes are filled with this incredibly long sequence of reused animation. And it's not even like the Z-Move animations that were reused for the entire series. They must have reused the same animation for Gigavolt Havoc more than a dozen times, and I never got tired of it because it just looked crisp. This whole Ultra Guardian sequence isn't even particularly impressive, especially compared to a lot of the other animated moments throughout the series. In all honesty, I would have rather not had the Ultra Beast in the anime at all because I did not like any of these Ultra Guardians episodes. Plus, Sun and Moon made the filler really, really good again, like the pancake race and the baseball episodes. Top notch, I would have rather had more of those. And finally, we have the Pokemon Journey series, which currently only has 22 episodes as of right now, but I'll do my best. I think the best part of this series is Ash and Go's dynamic, as well as the resurrection of cross-series continuity that isn't just Kanto. Uh, don't worry, we're getting there. We know Karina will be returning soon, there are already numerous hints to other people and Pokemon from Ash's past journeys appearing again soon. The worst part is just how the series started off. I feel like the first 10 episodes were a very awkward introduction to the series. They didn't have much direction and it seemed like they were just kind of doing stuff for the heck of it. But ever since Ash met Leon and established his new goal of competing in the Pokemon World Championships, I think the series has significantly improved. The difference between the first 10 episodes and the last 10 is night and day, and I have high hopes going forward. And that's gonna wrap things up for today's episode. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.